Hi, I'm Natasha Lockhart. We've got some big things happening in Spanish Fork over the next few weeks. I'm Stacy Beck. Maybe the biggest thing is the opening of the new Spanish Fork Hospital. And I'm Angie Murphy. We'll talk with a nurse administrator for all the details of the new hospital. And a local favorite activity for the kids is coming up. All this and more on Studio Chatter. Welcome to Studio Chatter. The calendar says spring, but there are days that feel like winter. Which is it? It's a typical Utah spring, right? right? Oh. Why are we always just like so confused by it? And it's like every year it's kind of like Because we want this. the warm days. We do. Uh, so somebody had, there was a meme the other day and it said something like, you are here. It was like false spring, false winter or something in between. Oh. And I'm like, I feel that way though. When I go to my closet, I'm like, should I put Is on a sweater? sweater? It was like today. Right? And then I went to get my mammogram and then I was like freezing oh, outside. It, it's it was colder. windy and cold. Yeah. yeah. But you went and got a mammogram. I went and got a mammogram. Good for you. For you. Guys. Yep. It was good. I'm always like, you're just a little hesitant because it is what it is. Right. You know what I mean? Well, and it's I not skipped pleasant. last year. But so there, I'm like, ooh, going on two years. I've got oh, to yeah, get my don't. Hand. Yeah, I know we're getting a little bit in the age category no, that we right. need to. No skipping. Yeah. But I have family history, so I think it's really important. Well, good for you, Ange. Done. Yep. It felt good, empowering. So do, is it something that you like remind yourself every year? Like it's the same time every year? Is it birthday time? To do, is it in the calendar? Or do you wait yeah, for the January, reminder Yeah, January, which card? is my birthday in the first okay. year. I just always book it. I used to do it like in October, Breast Cancer Awareness Month, and then it just kind of kept pushing. but. It just kind of reminds me, come October, that well, it's Well, the time new to hospital look. will have a mammogram room. I, I know. walked through it, so oh, I like women can do that. Right? I wish that I would have waited a little bit. Natasha, um, social media told me that you were out of town. What? <gasps> you left the I county? I left town. I was forced. What did you do? What? So it was the big Releve dance competition mm. in St. George. So yes, I was there to you know, make costume changes for the little ones. Was half the city in St. George? So that's what we were told, <laughs> but we, I really didn't see You were hyper-focused on right, dance, right. so you well, didn't we didn't see, see, see much of anything but the high school and the, the stage and the dance competition. But, but it, it was, was pretty still, packed down there for yeah, dance. Yeah, I mean, every, I think all of the hotels were probably reserved. I know a lot of people baseball, had or, yeah, baseball. Um, I know one of the moms was going in between the, the softball, baseball field and the and the but what competition. A fun time it of, was, it was so it's fun. It's a fun time of year and a fun time of life when you're in totally. that. It was, it was so much fun. So oh, the good. competition of course that. and the studio did really, really did well they? overall. Yes, yeah, so, so congratulations, Devotion. They they got overall white diamond. And oh, how did Barrett so. do? She did, she did Fabulous. really well too. Uh -huh. So she got second attendant for her solo. So that good. was really awesome. So awesome for one her. competition down. How many to go? Um, so actually just did another one today. Just days today. later. Just today, yes. Okay. And then we have um, two more competitions with the studio. Okay. And maybe one more independent. I don't know. We started soccer today too. So it's, yeah, it's, it's spring it's that for time. sure. Yep. It, is, yeah. it is that time of year. And that's when you want it to be spring, not winter feeling when you're out at soccer games. Right. So oh, it is well, what good. it is. Yeah, it was super fun, but she was swimming at the very last day, so in a nice outdoor pool, and it was just kind of nice to relax, and, and we didn't even take the guys with us, so it was just, it was just kind of a, a girls' weekend. We're super both heading awesome. down. We just discovered, yep, when we got here, we're right. heading down Again, to you mean. Weekend. You just like you just go down and do a little She's circular. She's doing a circle. Yes, <laughs> and you're getting away with family. I am. So yeah, we're gonna go down fun. and relax a little bit with Rhett's parents and Bo, and it'll be fun. It feels so good to have the change well, of scenery in the Red Rock. All of a sudden, it feels like time is just like ticking. Like we're almost to graduation. I'm kind of freaking out. My my oh, baby will yes. be graduating. Oh yeah, you're only two months out. And we they took a survey to see if we wanted to do it like how they did it last year, oh. drive through graduation yeah. or at the rodeo fairgrounds, and that won. Oh. So we're gonna have graduation at the rodeo. Really? Oh, good. Yeah. I thought kind of I had fun. heard that. Yeah. So I'm I excited. I think a couple schools are, aren't they? Yeah, they are. I think Maple Mountain is doing it as well. I know that one for sure. So the only bad thing about that is again back to the weather. Right. If Usually the last week of May 
is pretty good, but there's Memorial Day weekend you never traditionally know. has been kind of wet and cool. And I wonder what they'll do. But right now it's only, you can only bring four people, but they're hoping that with the mask, mandate. Now that's the thing I don't think they ever need to increase. Don't right. make any of us feel like we need to be at any other graduation beside our own kids because who wants to do that? I know half my that? people are like fine and then my two girls are like well we're the other two that get to go right? It's like okay so no to the grandparents. I remember getting invited to nieces and nephews graduation I'm like I barely want to go to my own kids right. and sit Sitting through, through it. Don't invite me to nieces and nephews I'll bring you a gift and go to the totally. after party. Yep. Do you know yep. I have to say uh, I haven't that's maybe one positive with with COVID. Some of the live streaming now that mm. that means that the live stream has to work. But I haven't really minded Being joining at home some and of doing the that. some of the yes. live stream is actually better. Sometimes mm -hmm. you get a better seat. Sometimes you, I mean, you get to see things better. That's I very would agree true. with that. You know, so like your weekend that you just had, right? Your so, husband and So they son. sat home. I cued. In fact, I cued everybody. Grandma, Grandpa, uh, hubby said, "Okay, she's on," and they they got to watch it all just perfectly fine. They get a better recording. They got to see everything just fine. Yeah, so, I kind of like it too with a lot of so things. So I mean, it depends. Yeah. I mean, I love the live experience, of course, but you just you. Know. Are you guys in any meetings still on Zoom? Or no? Ish. Yeah. Okay. Well, just I our church meetings. Week. Yes. So I should say yes. I think we're the last area in our city that still goes every other week to church. Mm -hmm. I think every other ward that I know. And they have be. been. And we yeah. did, yeah. But I'm enjoying it. I like being in my pajamas and yeah, that's, watching that's nice. it. And that's speaking nice. of streaming, like back to graduation, I know at yes. 17 we'll be streaming high school graduation. Yeah, which Probably is cool. Probably all the local things this spring. Mm -hmm. Like SF17 is slammed. slammed. Their schedule with baseball and dance and everything. So Super it's, cool it's great we have that them. It is, really it is that nice though it. that that way if you you can do all things like you can kind of if you can't be to one you can stream the other or record yes. the other one and I love to watch how other people do things like we attended a homecoming service for church this Sunday when we were away oh. and and I mean everybody kind of does everything different even with the hymns they hummed some are having oh. small groups yeah. Seeing instead, and I mean every Everyone congregation does kind thing. of does it different. So, super, super interesting. Yeah, it is interesting. I don't think we were going that direction at all. <laughs> but <laughs> I think back to what you said, like <laughs> things are starting to ramp up again, uh -huh. yeah. and you can feel it. And I think this last year we will take the th the good things, the things that needed to change, to slow we down, can to incorporate take, those into our yeah, life. Yeah, take like a breath. And maybe there are some meetings that can stay Zoom. Yeah. And I'm okay with some of that. With too. travel time yeah, yeah. and stuff, I think that that's super yeah. convenient. I think so. there's something to be said about in person with some things, but yeah. I yep. think it's definitely. Well, we a have good a great thing. show. I'm we so excited. Say, yes, it's going to be I'm exciting. Excited. Next on Studio Chatter, we'll look at one of the most popular youth programs in the city. That's coming right up. Welcome back to Studio Chatter. Where can your kids get lessons in crafts, music, theater, and a lot more? That would be the Youth Arts Festival. Welcome Whitney Hancock, the director of the festival, to our table. Hi, Sign Whitney. me up. Hello. When does it start? <laughs> Where can I send them? You, <laughs> Natasha, it's for the youth. No, my no, kids. she wants oh, to okay. send them. <laughs> yes, I'm sending them. We have adult classes for parents that come and hang out, but. They didn't want the to. The hills are alive. Can we sing with <laughs> them? Yes. So June 7th through the 18th, that's so Spanish Fork okay. High School. And now pe people can sign up now? No. Okay, when does it go live? It goes live May 12th oh. at midnight. So stay up late. Can write that you down. can't even May sign up till May 12th. We haven't even launched the course descriptions. They launch April 1st. Okay. okay, so for the month of April, you just have to go through it, ask your kids, what do you want to do? Maybe they need to save a little bit of money to help yes. pay for their fees. Yes, Because there's a ton of courses. There's, um, I didn't count how many courses, but we have uh, 1,600 slots available. What? You can take wow. 1,600 children in a week. Two Whitney. Weeks. For two weeks. Let's like, <laughs> ooh. That's crazy. I feel okay. like we gotta start over again. No, who are you? <laughs> Tell us about you. <laughs> yeah. Who can handle 1,600 yes, who can kids? handle this? I'm guessing you probably have a little bit of help. <laughs> I do, I have a really, really good committee that helps. Cheryl Anderson is my co-director and she is amazing. She's an elementary school teacher at East Meadows. And so she kind of whips the kids into 
shape and kind of gets the um, committee organized and gets them doing what they need to do and I just kind of get all the classes gathered and get the teachers on board and I think we have 45 teachers this year. So that does that mean about 45 courses too? No, it's like 102 courses, different classes. Because so they have five teachers classes teaching for the day, multiples. and then, yeah, they teach multiple classes, okay. different classes. So how long have you been involved in the Youth Arts? So I started volunteering in 2008 as advertiser, and I helped like two years advertising. Then the next year I was like the co-director, and then I just kind of took it over from there. And when I started, we had 500 kids in the program, and that's... So it's not necessarily 500 kids, it's 500 spots taken. Right. Because a lot of kids will we'll do, multiple. do multiple classes. And then um, we went up about 200 kids every year since I've taken over. So that's when I say we have 1,600 slots available. We will probably come really close to filling those slots. Okay, so when you say like youth arts, it's not the sports things that are through Parks and, parks and Rec. Tell us what some of the successful or most popular courses have been. Can I tell from my singing? <laughs> so these are the classes that if you want to sign up for, you get on at midnight, mm -hmm. Tuesday night, and you watch the clock and you have it ready and you make sure all of your kids are already registered with it to get in because they fill within 60 seconds. Mm -hmm. It's like swim lessons. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, back in the but day. But it is sitting like, in the yeah, hallway it is waiting to get in. It like like art. singing, songwriting. Yeah, she's going to let Like ceramics. Yeah, what yeah. are the... Ceramics is actually new this year. Okay. We have um, Brent Davidson who teaches at Mountain or Tip View High School. He's going to be teaching. He's also been teaching with the adults education arts program oh okay and so he's familiar with it so he's teaching this year um we have like tons of fun classes like watercoloring um build your own fairy garden oh, and, like, little thing. those that. classes fill up um kinder arts so three to five year olds and they just read a story and then they make a craft and have a snack and oh my god they just have so much that. fun up. Yep. there's edible art where they also read a story but then they make a little art project that is like a the cutest one is she did like a little crab and it was just those baby bell cheeses and she just put sugar eyes on them and it was a cute little crab and so they got to eat the snack read the story and so there's just so many different things we have musical theater ensemble um karma christensen actually does a whole two-week program where she puts on a play in two weeks and it is amazing oh, this wow. year they're doing robin hood and so yeah she's teamed up with the arts festival for i don't know how long she's done it but for quite a while, and they put on a play. She takes 75 kids just in her classes. Oh, okay. Wow. Yeah, Incredible. I think that's why I, that's what I was maybe So Natasha, with. that's where you want to go. Yeah, well, of course. Yes, if they're singing <laughs> in Robin Hood. That one does split past too. So uh, what about ages, price? I mean, I'm, I'm sure there's going to be some variables when, yes. you're, when you're looking over the schedule. So this year, I actually, um, well, last year, because Corona hit and we weren't able to do the program, but right before I was, we didn't know if we were going to be able to do it, so I put in for the RAP tax grant, and I put in to help subsidize the cost of the program. So normally our class fee is $30, but this year um, we were able to cut that in half to about $15. Mm. Are you so, kidding me? So yeah, so it's going to be really affordable. That's so explain the RAP tax to me. A little bit. <laughs> the RAP tax? Do you not watch no, City Council? No, I don't. Well, just, can you imagine people not watching? <laughs> Why would you not watch? I don't know. So, I just want Stacy to tell me everything that's going on. So the RAP tax is for parks, arts, and recreation. Recreation. And so if you have an EO one C, is that what it is? A tax. If you're tax exempt and you have a program that's local in Spanish Fork, then you can apply for the RAP tax and apply for funding for your program. And so um, we're technically not the city, but we are. Okay, we're so under it. But you still need funds because you don't have a budget. Funds. And the RAP tax is where the city council agreed a couple years ago that six cents on every what hundred dollars goes yeah. into so, so it's like I think the share, fund it's a part of the those, sales tax so, so in 2020 I think we gathered eight hundred thousand dollars oh my heavens I think six hundred so yeah. this can go to this is a perfect yeah so, so yeah so I put in for the grant I asked for money to help subsidize subsidize the cost because a lot of people um we're kind of hit hard by it community. and we want everybody to yeah we want everybody to be able to participate in the program so that's that is forward thinking. Incredible. 
That yep. is incredible. It really but is. But aren't there some classes that cost more? Like I know in the past you've done Legos classes and... So the material fees are still the same because we don't, it's the teachers who are in charge of the material okay. fees. And so it's the class fee that came down. So like the okay. class fee is $30, but say, um, so for braiding, you get a head so you can learn to braid on it. Oh. And so that's $30 so you can, that we can purchase the head, you can take it home and all of the tools that you'll need for the class. So there's okay. material fee, but if you pay the material fee, you get the materials. All right, but every class fee is $15 across the board? No. So there's, like, Karma's class is two hours, and so hers oh, okay. was a little bit more. So I just was able to take about $10, $15 off of each of them. Okay. So Even Karma, still, like, yeah, they oh, have a discount. That's huge. That's big. Right. Are these teachers paid or volunteers? They're paid. Okay, good. So our classes, um, good. yeah, we're self-sustaining. We're completely awesome. self-sustaining. Um, so, yeah. Oh, wow. This is so cool. And especially since you guys didn't do it last year. Yes, we are so gonna be like, excited to be able to see people in person and do it. So let's talk about that. What kind of precautions are you taking this year to make it safe for both the students and the teachers? So we've been buying supplies okay. and um, wipes and spraying things to be able to clean up and everything. And we're the governor's kind of changing some rules. Mm -hmm. We've already told our teachers, please expect to be wearing a mask. Sure. You know, especially if you come within six feet of the kids and the mm -hmm. high school's big enough and we've only um, allowed 10 kids into most of the art classes. Dance classes, we were able to take a little bit more. Mm -hmm. um, Karma's already got her stuff situated so she knows what she's doing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm not even worried about her. Um, but yeah, we just have said, Whatever the school district is doing is what we're going to be doing. So if okay. we don't have to wear masks in May, we won't uh, We won't okay. have to wear masks at the program. So okay. we're just kind of playing it by ear, but we have taken a lot of um, steps into making sure that we can do okay. what we need. Okay, all right, well that's fair, because I just wondered if yeah. maybe the number of students you'd be able to accept maybe had, had to be dropped at this point, or? Yes and no. So okay. most classes, we try to keep it more of like a private okay. kind of yeah. camp, because we do offer a lot of classes. Um, so yeah, they usually, our minimum number is usually 10. Okay. And then um, we go up to 15, 12 to 15 per class. Um, our cooking classes, we've talked to the health um, board and everything, and we're able to still keep the 20 kids in that class because there's enough space in the kitchen and they'll be constantly together and food will be already ready for yeah. them. Okay. So well, let's finish on that. You, in the past, have had a showcase, and some of us have been able to come and judge, like yes, the cupcake have. decorating or cake decorating. Will there be a showcase this year? There will be a showcase. Okay, um, good. We can't do cupcakes because <laughs> of a lot of reasons on that part. <laughs> um, but yeah, so we are. Do we still are doing the cupcake class. It's just going to be different this okay. year. So we aren't going to be doing cupcake wars. It's just going to be they get to do the class. They get to learn the creative side of cupcake yeah. decorating. So it's just for them to eat this year. Yeah. So um, we will be doing the showcase and the art show. Um, the showcase will be different unless it changes because we only get a 25% capacity. And most of the time we fill the auditorium. I bet it will change. I'm, I'm hoping I'm it will. So as of right now, we're planning on um, our dance groups will be in the gyms. So we'll okay. have one dance group over here, one dance group over here, and then our other programs will be in um, the little theater because Karma needs to move into the large auditorium to be able to seat how many people she will need for the place. So. COVID has made every event have just a little trickier. Plan a, not just plan A and B, but plan A to Z. Like right. if it does this, we have changes. so many backups. Yeah. 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 Oh well, it sounds fabulous, Whitney. Thank you yeah. for sharing Thank and really so much. Much. letting our viewers know Super about this awesome. upcoming opportunity. Love it. Love it. Love it. All right. Coming up next on Studio Chatter, what do you like to do during spring break? We'll talk about that next. Welcome back to Studio Chatter. Easter, warmer weather, this all adds up to spring break. Let's talk about that. Let's talk Let's about do. spring break. Are we doing anything? No. 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 <laughs> no. Maybe certainly, we certainly not Miami. <laughs> oh, I know. Miami. Florida's getting slammed. I've never seen so many people travel to Florida. And as Mexico. I have. I feel like I've just heard everyone going to those two. Those are probably the places mm -hmm. that are most open. Or St. George. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yep. Okay, so if we're not going anywhere, are you, what about plans for Easter? 
<laughs> oh well, boy. I love yes, my little yes. grandkids' Easter baskets and stuff. Normally, we go to my sister's and have a big Easter egg hunt. She's going to be out of town. So now me and my other sister are like, do we do something or do we let, like, my merry kids maybe could just do their in-laws? I don't know. Yeah, we're kind of at that stage, fuddy too. Duddy. I'm we would being... always go to Grandma Beck. She'd do a huge Easter egg hunt. Now I'm getting my own grandkids. Right. But not enough to make it, like, a rip-roaring Easter right. shindig yet. Right, so, it's so I can't like, decide if I'm going to do it alone this year yeah. if I just let them go do their thing. Mm. What about you? So, yeah, we're, we're going to my, my mom and dad's. Okay. So, so they're coming home. We'll do the Easter egg hunt. We always have the traditional, you know, ham dinner. And okay. So, and so is and your Easter egg hunt outside or inside? Outside. And do they just hide eggs with candy, eggs, money? Both. Okay. That's so, what my kids yeah. always have. Mm -hmm. And it used to be... I mean, back in my day, it used to be the like the boiled eggs. So there would be like the boiled, hard boiled eggs, yes. and the plastic eggs, and then you know the golden eggs. Yes, that we have, have our money yes. eggs. Now I think it's just like the plastic eggs with candy and mostly candy. Oh, oh, our kids right. are so awful. Like because we let all of our so older spoiled. they'll shake it, and then if they know that there's candy in it, and then just drop those ones. <laughs> I'm like, do we even do candy anymore? Do they all just need to be money? A whole bunch and of how fun is that? That's why it's like good right. to the adults. You're done. Yeah. Now we're doing the kids. Well, yeah, and we since do it, the everyone. coin shortage, I mean, do you just Venmo them and just call it good? <laughs> there right? you go. Is there it's a, a great coin idea still? I don't know. Was there ever really? I don't know. I thought that I don't was know. kind of silly, actually. Yeah. I'm like, can't they just make more? Like, I always thought deal? that too. I never really understood There's, that. Right. I'm like, can't they just make print, more money? They print more I money. I mean, I know. I know. When I was really young, I would tell my mom, you know, can't you just write more checks? Exactly. Like, you know, it doesn't. It just mm. now that I have my own. Okay. I want to ask you guys, oh. since we're none of us are doing anything fun for spring yeah, break, we want, 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 or Easter. What <laughs> has been your favorite spring break? Either going mm. back to your childhood or something you've done with your kids. Oh, well, spring break. I was gonna. I was thinking Easter because I was going to say camping. I mean, that used to be really, really fun. Easter we took camping, a cruise one year, and it was really over with Rhett's parents, and it break. was really neat. Yeah, okay. it was so fun. that was a good one. Mm. And you say camping? Well, that was more Easter. I'm trying to think of like some spring break that really stands out. I think I the one that's coming to my mind is we for a couple years when our kids were like teenagers and like late elementary was Moab. We've done that one so, time, and it was so fun, Like too. renting Jeeps or four-wheelers and going out in the, you know, Red mm -hmm. Rocks and yeah. staying at the pool. We did that, like, three, four or five years ago, and it was so fun. Yeah, but you know what? And I, I have heard from three parents, three different parents, I don't know if I want to take my teenagers, high school teenagers, on spring break because they, want they, to be they just want to be home with their kids. So they're not super fun mm -hmm. to take. And I said, that is exactly, I remember us cutting our... Vacation trip, short, short in be Moab because they're like, this really isn't even a trip, mm -hmm. Mom. We didn't fly anywhere. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what about the Jeep rental all day in the hotel and the eating out? Like that we wasn't took them good home. Enough? They just want to be with their ki their their and friends. Their friends, yeah. yeah. Well, and the way that it falls because. Easter and spring break are kind of, you know, right on the heels right. of each other, kind of back to back. And for us, I've, I've said, well, just because they're on spring break doesn't necessarily mean that we're on vacation from work either right, because right. we're working. Mm -hmm. So we've been taking all of this other time away from work to kind of do these other things. So our yeah. bigger vacations come where in later summer and fall, so. And then what about the break that the kids have had for the last 12 months? Yeah. Mm. Do they need a spring break? I, I, <laughs> probably right? not. <laughs> so just more time I, I think parents want to get away. Yes. Like, let's get out because we haven't done anything right. for the last right. year. But right. It, it might be a really interesting year. And I think as parents, we live in a society that if everyone's leaving, you kind of feel like pressure, like, where are we going to go? Right. What are we going to do? We can't stay home. Right. But a lot of right. people are, like, not planning because they're not quite sure what's opened up. Right. So How, this year's mm -hmm. still a little tricky. I do think well, so well. our dilemma, too, even from last time, was that we have all of this time that we need to use in different places, or it's that, you know, trying to fill in what we, or make up for, rather, what we are yeah. trying to right. put from last year. And it's like, oh, my gosh, we have all these things we need to do and not enough time. So yeah. it's right. fill in the squeeze of that, yeah. too. So it's some in some ways more stressful. Well, hopefully some anyway. of our viewers get to go somewhere fun. <laughs> yes, enjoy break. your spring break. I'm going break. to have a new grandbaby and that'll be fun. Yay. Yep. Spring break. Yep. 
Uh -huh. Oh, that will be fun. So yep, precious. It'll be good. Good. It'll be worth staying home for. Coming up on Studio Chatter, April 5th marks a big day for Spanish work. We'll find out more about that next. Welcome back to Studio Chatter. If you haven't noticed the new big building complex in Canyon Creek, that would be the new Spanish Fork Hospital. And to give us all the details is Megan Johnson, the nurse administrator at the hospital. Welcome, Megan. Thank you. Hi, Megan. Hello. Wow. Thank you for having me. This is so exciting. What a big job. It has been huge. <laughs> that sounds huge. And nurse administrator, right? <laughs> it, yes. It, there's a lot going into it, uh, a lot more than I would have ever anticipated. Well, I thank can, you for being here yes. right now during your busiest time of life ever, probably. Right? Yes. And then we invite you to be on Studio yes, Chatter. We're getting I'm it all honored. done. <laughs> I'm honored. As a Spanish Fork resident, I am truly honored to be here. Well, this tell is us great. a little bit about about you, Megan, before we dive into your job in the hospital. Yeah, so um, I have lived in Spanish Fork for about 11 years now. I'm married, I have two boys. Um, love this community. Um, been with Intermountain for about 19 years. Wow, wow. And um, started started in housekeeping. And no way. I, yes, <laughs> yeah, so I, I, I love that Intermountain really has been able to provide that path. Um, if you have the dedication, the determination, they'll provide the resources. So I started in housekeeping um, mm -hmm. and through those 19 years, I've worked my way up uh, to be the nurse administrator for Spanish wow. Fork Hospital. Um, and just, just really excited about that. I, I, I love nursing, I love patient care, I love the interaction with the community. Uh, my background is emergency medicine. Oh, wow. And so I just, I get that, I get that adrenaline rush, I okay. love it. Okay. How many nurses do you have coming in to the new hospital? So we've got about 130 clinical staff. Wow. Um, and that includes nurses and techs. Okay. okay. That, will, that will start with us on, on opening day. So when we say nurse administrator, are you just over the nurses or what does your job all entail? So I look over anything that's clinical. So nurses, techs, um, anything that's coming down from corporate as far as policies, procedures, changes, okay. that's what I oversee. I make sure that our frontline caregivers have that information. So if something changes, they know they have the process, we can work through patient flows to, um, mm -hmm. to keep our patients safe. And that's really what we're looking to do. So I over oversee all of that to make sure that they have all of that information. If we change things um, from a facility level, I make sure that the managers have that information so that the frontline caregivers okay. have that information. That's a big That's responsibility a big job, yeah. with 130. <laughs> yes, it is. It's so exciting though. I love it. That's we awesome. we have a great staff. We've really tried hard to bring that um, culture uh -huh. into what we're building for Spanish Fork Hospital. Okay. So how long has a project been coming? So this project really is about 10 to 15 years in the making. Intermountain Healthcare started talking about this quite a while ago. Um, we broke ground, I want to say about three years ago. Um, and just building that hospital, making sure that we are growing with the community. Mm -hmm. And and really when you look at it, the community continues to go. And, and this project, if you think about it, was 10 to 15 years in the making. So it's kind of had to, to grow with the um, the growth in the community, and then we're also trying to plan for future growth. I like thinking back on in the past when I first heard it. Uh, do you guys remember yes, the food for less building? Yes, we're getting all and it's yeah. going to be where the food for less totally. building. Yes. So everybody knew that, and then you guys switched land. So now you actually have a lot more land to expand on. Yes. So the, the Spanish Fork City came to us, and and really that that food for less area, mm -hmm. it, right off Highway 6, um, you know, it, it could be a popular area. And when they were working with Spanish Fork City, they thought, you know, we have this land in the back, um, it provides you for more opportunity to growth. So we, we sit on almost 50 acres. And so growth, we, it's limitless. It is. Well, and with what how we Spanish do. Fork is growing, I think that was so wise. Yeah, and, and not just Spanish Fork, um, our you know, surrounding Springville and um, Mapleton, Santa Quinn, Payson, mm -hmm. I mean, just the, the, the growth south um, is, 
Yeah, it's limitless amazing. right now. Yes, right? it is. Yeah, very so true. So the you're into training. The flyers are coming. What what is the what is the date? What's the opening date? So we open April fifth, and we will open our doors at six a.m. Um, we're really excited. A lot of our nurses, our staff, will start coming in at five a.m. I'm sure a lot of us will be there sooner. We're just excited for this. Wow. Um, so April fifth at six a.m. and um, you know, it's, it's funny, we've talked, we've talked about this for a while, and I, I, I think we're all excited. Um, I think our opening will be a little anticlimactic. <laughs> I wonder that, like, are there patients, like, at the so, door, like, Walmart so to open open? <laughs> it, it will, it'll be interesting to see, really, what actually happens. Um, do you have things scheduled? Surgeries, right. so, mammograms, colonoscopies, like are, are, is anything on the books for April? Yeah, so we've okay. actually opened up our surgery schedule, our endoscopy schedule, um, wow. radiology, uh, they've okay. started scheduling. We've got a full day for our CT scanner already on April 5th. Really excited about that. Awesome. Um, surgery schedules, they're coming in. I think we've got six endoscopy procedures scheduled for that day. Wow. Um, the lab, um, emergency department, you know, they can just walk right in and. And, and we'll be open for You'll business. Be going. Yeah. Wow. On my tour last week, we, I don't know if you were, you were in the room when we got to work on a little orange. So yes. we were in the OR mm -hmm. and we got this, what was it? The uh, cautery. Cautery and uh -huh. it like sl sliced open the orange and then we cauterized it. Like that was really cool. <laughs> yeah, lots of cool things. When you talk about um, evidence-based practice and the, the top of the line um, equipment, um, we've really brought this to Spanish Fork, so we're, we're really excited for what this will bring to the community. Oh, I was I'm gonna excited. say, what are you most excited about within the hospital or what's gonna happen there? Or maybe what you're more nervous about, like that first day? Um, you know, I, I think my excitement builds from the culture that we have worked so hard to, to bring on right up front. Um, Francis Gibson, the um, administrator for the hospital, I think he's been on the show before. Um, but he, one thing that we've really wanted to, to look at is we have one chance to set the right culture. Otherwise, we will spend our entire careers trying to fix what we the, the expectations mm -hmm. we didn't set up front. And so our caregivers, we we wanted them to be excited. We wanted top notch. We didn't want caregivers to want to be here to come to Spanish Fork Hospital just because they live in this zip code. Um, mm -hmm. they, they are truly invested in what we do in patient satisfaction, in um, the evidence-based mm -hmm. practices, and, and we've done that. And when you walk through the doors of Spanish Fork Hospital, you can feel it. That's um, so cool. it's, it's different. Mm -hmm. um, it's, you know, even though you're nervous to be there or it's not the best situation, you can feel that culture um, from every single caregiver, every, every experience encounter with our caregivers. Um, it's just different. What about the size of the facility? So, is it big, small? How how did how did size come into factor with with the size of the community? Yeah. So we we looked at the size of of Spanish Fork and and it's planned for growth. Mm -hmm. um, when when you look at the size, I don't know. It, we're a little bit bigger than like Orem Community Hospital, but a little bit smaller than American Fork. And really over the next 10 to 15 years, we have the capability to be about the same size as American Fork Hospital. Okay. Um, when we talk about growth and when they were looking at the plans and the growth for Spanish Fork Hospital, those plans are already set in. Um, so there's the ability to add in extra labor and delivery postpartum rooms. Mm -hmm. um, there's already a shelled in space for our level two nursery. So if we hit 2000 deliveries a year, we can start working on building out that level two nursery, keep some of those sicker babies on site instead of having to transfer them to another facility. Awesome. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, our, our OR um, floor on the second floor, there's two Sheldon spaces for additional OR suites. So we'll open with four and the ability to grow into two. Um, so really when you're looking at the growth, they've already planned for that. Um, we just need the community to come in and support mm -hmm. us and mm -hmm. um, love the culture that we've built and, and really make this their hospital. Oh, I, I love will. the foresight you guys have yeah. had. So let's talk about like the number of beds mm -hmm. versus the number of services. Yes. So 
Spanish Fork Hospital is, it's 33 inpatient beds. Um, that okay. includes our women's services and medical, med surge um, okay. services. So on our third and fourth floors. Um, but really when you talk about services, it's, it's, it's almost endless, right? Um, we want to be able to provide 80% of the services that, that our community needs, knowing that the other 20% have Utah Valley, you know, just okay. 15 minutes up the road, 20 minutes up the road, um, that, and they do some of those services every day uh, and they're limitless. So when you talk about strokes, when you talk about um, heart attacks, cath labs, um, dialysis, those things are all available at Utah Valley. We didn't want to try and mimic them because they are more specialized. Gotcha. And so really what we want to do is provide 80% of those services here in our community. So we talk about the emergency department, we talk about imaging in the lab. Um, we talk about OR, you know, kind of same day surgery procedures. Maybe they need 24, 48 hour observation uh, on med surge. Um, endoscopy, it's huge, you know, um, trying to get the population to understand the importance of colonoscopies. Mm -hmm. We've got labor and delivery, postpartum, lactation services. Um, for moms that might be struggling within the community, they can schedule an appointment and still come to the hospital and have that support right there. Um, and then our medical surgical, and then we've got outpatient IV therapy. Awesome. Wow. wow. Yeah. There's going to be a lot of education. Yes. Like on your end. I mean, yes. You're not over that, right? I mean, you're over the nurses. So someone's just going to be over education of like South Valley. Let's yes. Let the community know what we offer here. Yeah. So we've got an amazing team of educators. Um, each of our clinical areas have an educator okay. that's required or that, that is responsible for educating our nurses. Um, and and then really working with the community okay. as far as education goes. Um, I have been working with um, you know, community leaders of what are our gaps, what are our concerns within the community, what things can, that, that can we help with. Um, we have five education classrooms on site at the hospital that during the day, during the week, we'll use for meetings, for training and stuff like that. Okay. But really after hours, how can we provide this to the community, whether we're teaching about um, diabetes or mental health issues. Um, you know, we really want to be able to provide support to our LGBTQ plus community. Um, that's South County, because uh, there aren't a lot of resources down here. So being able to provide that support to the community is also very important to us. It's really great. thinking outside okay. the box on all that. I can't wait to hear more. <laughs> yes, that's a great place to pause. Let's take a quick break and continue this conversation in just a moment. Welcome back to Studio Chatter. We are talking with Megan Johnson, the nurse administrator at the new Spanish Work Hospital. We are all so excited for this new facility. And we also want to know about the new clinic yeah. that's adjacent to the hospital. Yeah, so we call it our MOB, the medical office building. Okay. Um, there's three stories on, on the clinic side attached right to the hospital. So easy access from the clinic right into the hospital. Um, we've got four or five uh, clinics that are set to open up with us. Um, mm -hmm. We've got sports medicine, orthopedic, uh, family practice, and then the Springville Instacare will move on site with us oh, April really? 5th. Yeah, so we're really excited about that. The Instacare is very excited, so the old uh, work med will move into the Springville Instacare current site, okay. and the Instacare will move on site with us. So really wow. when you talk about uh, availability of resources, um, it's it's really top notch. It, it really, we, we both work off of each other. We um, really help each other to be successful. So if the hospital is needing services, um, we can provide to the clinic, and if the clinic is needing services from the hospital, uh, really looking at optimizing patient care, patient okay. satisfaction. Totally, they can just hop yes. from one facility to the next. <laughs> or say, yeah, hey, we can't care. have you in instant care, let's get well, you over yep. to the ER. And, and yeah. really, that's, that's a process that we, we looked at. We really defined what that process is for patient safety. How do we get a patient from the instant care over to the emergency? 
emergency department. You know, if a patient shows up randomly at the at the Instacare stroke or, or um, mm. cardiac symptoms, how do we get them safely from one place to and another? Now they're just right next door. Yep, and so that's a process that we've been working over uh, for the last about two months with that's closely neat. with the Instacare to make sure because the Instacare's never had this resource before. Um, they've always had to call 911 or transfer the patient by private vehicle. Okay, I can just tell your excitement. It makes me <laughs> excited for all of it. I bet the other facilities around the valley and state are a little envious. Like when anything's yes. new and you guys have the latest and greatest of everything. Yes. You're able so, to plan off of seeing how other things yeah. have gone. Yeah, so I mean, Stacey, you, you went through the VIP tours. Um, we were able to, to tour with some of the other leaders from other hospitals, uh -huh. um, including Mountain View. And mm -hmm. really, I'm so excited uh, to, to, for this collaboration with Mountain View. That's so it's cool. It's not, there's no competition. We really, really have the best interest of the community at heart and I can tell you that is the same mm -hmm. from the leadership there we are we're gonna work hard to make sure that this community is taken care of that we um, have the resources that they yeah. need and, and really make it a collaboration and work together I love it um, yeah. so it, we're really excited about that oh, tell us it. a little bit about the CEO and his leadership. Um, oh. So Francis Gibson is our CEO, um, our administrator. I worked with him previously at Orem Community Hospital, so he and I have an amazing relationship. We work very well together. Um, he has a second job, I would say, part-time <laughs> job is what he calls it. He is um, the majority lead for the House of Representatives, so really he's uh, He's MIA for about the first six weeks of every year yes. and about one or two days a month. Um, so you take on two roles. With that position, <laughs> um, but you know, he's always there, he's always available. He has the the biggest heart yes, he um, and the, the, the best sense of humor. Um, and so I, I really love, love working with him. Um, and really when we set out on this venture together, I, I wouldn't have done it with anybody but him. And so it's, it's been great. Um, he really is the one that defined the culture and r what we wanted to bring and, and how we were going to set that expectation right up front. He'll be so. great at that. And if I can add to that, Francis was instrumental in um, fast tracking that new exit between Spanish Fork and yes. Springville. <laughs> 30 years ago, Smith Auto built their Smith Auto Care because there was going to be an on-off ramp right there. Never happened. They sell it to Tim Daly and now the on-off on off ramp should be there in two years. Yes. So yeah. he, wow, he sped that. that through like yes. because of who he is and what he does and then he was assigned the CEO of the hospital. Like the stars aligned and yeah. that's going to be so big to have it that It is. There. I mean, if you look at the exit, the Main Street exit off of Highway 6 and the, yes. the amount of traffic that is it's already crazy. there, yes. it's going to be great to have that resource yeah. that exit right there and I mean he pushed it along we we were thinking it was going to be another 10 years yeah, before it, we would get that so great and it'll so be a good he'll be fantastic yeah well I have to ask also about uh, telemed yes tell us a little bit about that I mean I'm, I'm sure it's been kind of interesting building a hospital in the times that we're living in right now so yeah, <laughs> you know what and it's it's kind of ironic how it mm -hmm. happened um, with the pandemic telemedicine has become so much more important um, right. we've used that resource so much more this last year um, and just how it flows um, how it's evolved mm -hmm. um, the timing is perfect so when we started building Spanish Fork Hospital we knew we wanted to bring telemedicine in mm -hmm. um, I don't think we totally understood the full capability uh, so telemedicine is where we have the ability to um, to call in with monitors uh, to a specialist and that maybe they're not on site. Mm -hmm. So we've got telehealth in all of our emergency department rooms. We've got them in all five labor and delivery rooms and we've got them in all 16 of our med surge rooms, which is wow. huge, wow. huge for so a new facility. So it's not just like calling the doctor to talk about a symptom, the doctors are actually using it to 
facilitate uh -huh. yeah so we, we've set this up for the doctors um, up at our at our hub of, of telehealth to be able to help us run codes um, to help us to provide extra support to our neonates our, our newborns that maybe aren't um, transitioning mm -hmm. um, after labor after delivery uh, as they should and so but it extends to that we can provide crisis um, interventions for mental health we can um, do wound care um, we can do palliative services interpretation services so really uh, infection prevention and services we can do so much with this capability um, and then we've also got two portable telehealth monitors, one will be located in, in our CT scanner because if we have a patient that comes in with signs and symptoms of a stroke, our goal is to get them to CT and connected to a, with a neurologist in under 10 minutes. And this allows us to get them to CT and connect them at the same time. So, um, you know, time is brain. That is our goal, under 10 minutes, which seems crazy. Um, and then we've got one in our postpartum area. So if a mom starts to hemorrhage, if there's difficulty after labor, we've got that um, connection right away and there will not be any delays. Okay, Gosh, I wanna go off the huge. list for a minute. We have so many yes. things, but two, <laughs> two questions I've thought of. The ER. Yes. So, I mean, we Spanish Fork, Highway 6. Yes. You know, lots of accidents happen there. What percentage can go straight to your hospital and what percentage do you think will have to go further and go to Utah Valley? So really anybody can come into the emergency department. They are trained to do anything and everything. Um, they are certified in trauma nursing, pediatric trauma nursing. Um, our providers are the same providers that, uh, the same provider group that's at Utah Valley Hospital. So they are trauma certified physicians, which is an amazing mm -hmm. asset um, to Spanish Fort community so they can they can take anything if anything walks in the doors private vehicle they'll take it now if if our ambulances respond to a crash up in in the canyon mm -hmm. um, and life lights called life light will not come to Spanish okay. Fork Hospital they'll go directly to Utah Valley Hospital because it's a trauma too there's there's more resources available um, but we will have at Spanish Fork Hospital an on-call um, surgeon orthopedic on-call um, to be able to provide those services that we can close to home. Anybody needing a transport out because they require a higher level of care, we have those resources. We've been working on that. We've been working with Spanish Fork City EMS and Mapleton EMS. What does that look like? Um, yeah. And really getting a process, collaborating with them. If we need to transfer somebody to Utah Valley, what does that look like uh, to make sure that we're keeping okay. our patients safe? Okay, my other question. So technically, like three years ago at the groundbreaking, our goal, City IHC, was to have this facility open last fall. Yes. COVID hits last spring, yes. everything was delayed. Do you feel like gaining this extra six months has been advantageous or do you feel like, oh, it's just dragging everything out, I wish we would have opened back then? Or do you feel like, well, we were really truly able to like accelerate or produce steps and procedures that have been helpful. Can I say both? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I want to it's hear what's been, it, it's been challenging. It really has. You know, we were we were set and ready to go October 26th um, to open our doors and, and be able to provide this resource to the community. Um, you know, we wanted to take COVID patients. We wanted to be um, there and available to help offset some of the demands at the other facilities. Mm -hmm. um, it didn't happen and it was hard. It was really hard for those of us that were already on the project. But when you look at where we're at today, um, I can't complain. We are, we are ready. We were able to think through processes more, to come up with some ideas um, and really truly it allowed some of those caregivers that were frontline uh -huh. to remain frontline um, oh, okay. to help those uh, w when we were surging, when, when there was an influx of patients with COVID, when we were maxed out, when we were trying to figure out, you know, how are we going to move this ICU patient and this med surge patient? Who's being discharged? When are they being discharged? Because we need more rooms. You know, we really were able to leave a lot of those caregivers frontline okay. um, longer than anticipated, which was a great asset to to Utah Valley, to Orm Community, to American Fork, to, you know, Stan Pete, Fillmore, Severe, those other hospitals. Mm -hmm. um, 
So really, it was it was bittersweet. I bet. Um, I bet it was hard to say. Oh, we'll wait six <laughs> more months. Yeah. 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 Oh. Yes. Well, now we're we're finally here, and it's nearly opening day. What what makes that so great for you? Oh, you know, last and final. <laughs> really, it's it's like I talked about. It's it's the culture that we've built, um, and what that means to the community. I hope that when they walk through those doors, they feel that it's different, um, that each and every caregiver truly um, wants what's best for them. They want them to, to get the services that they needed. How do, they, how do we get them back to optimal health? How do we get them back to the community? Really, that's our whole goal. Um, healthcare is changing more and more to less inpatient and more treating patients at home. Um, they do better. They, you know, they're, they're more comfortable in those situations. Mm -hmm. And so um, you know, we're, we're really excited about that. And, and when you look at access to care, uh, preventative measures, uh, and the ability to provide that to Spanish Fork community um, and, and just South County really uh, is what I'm most excited for. Great. We are Thanks super for lucky. You can already feel that a yeah. bit. Yeah. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you. There's more studio chatter coming up. Welcome back. What did we learn today? A whole lot from Megan. A lot. A ton. Yes. I mm -hmm. want to go to the hospital. <laughs> you guys are wanting some little tours before I they know. open. I know. I really do. I think that would be awesome. Like everything. Everything. Like we had a list and we were just like, let's mm -hmm. get through it. And just everything's brand new and I don't know. State I'm of excited. the art. Right. New ideas. Right. I'm super excited Fresh for Spanish culture. Fork to have that. Yeah. That's yeah. really well, neat. I literally remember standing at the groundbreaking when she said three years ago. I just, I can't believe how quickly that time has passed. And it's we were standing there with the watermelons and this is gonna yes. be a hospital. And the, and the horse and the plow, remember right? how they were doing that? And, so. and all of a sudden it's like it's finished and it's opening and it's going to serve the community. And, and if there was one message to take away from that, she just wanted that sense of community. And I think- that culture of like, right? yeah. love and acceptance, yes. education. Yes, and I, yeah. I mean, this is definitely the place for that. So totally. I'm so and excited. And then just amazing that Whitney Hancock can has the capacity and bandwidth to pull 1,600 kids together to teach them and have them have two Unreal. weeks of fun. That just, yeah, blows my mind and gives me anxiety. <laughs> <laughs> well, and that they want to do that for the youth and that they have yeah. such a love of the arts community to do that for the youth. I loved it. And, yeah. and so many fun new ideas. Mm -hmm. Well, and behind the scenes, she told us that she was one of the groundbreaking people here at SF17, got things rolling. That's yeah. kind of fun. She's and been with the community. She's helped, like, um, her and her husband came to, like, the this group when we were designing the All Abilities Park. We reached out to parents of special needs kids mm -hmm. to come and help guide th through the process of that development. Like, she's just, like... In, in all these little yeah, I feel like she's woven into a lot of the fibers of Spanish That work. makes things better. Yep. So I, mean, I love people here. like that. Mm -hmm. I did yep. want to give a shout out to Megan. We had her on Studio Chatter last time. Yep. If you need a cool looking mug with some glitter. A fun little gift for people. It, I yes. gave them to my two doctors. and Did they love them? Uh-huh. So yeah, you can find her Aren't on fantastic? Instagram. Mm -hmm. Love, yeah. love. So Thank nice. So much. Thank you, Meg. Well, all right. Good stuff, guys. Yes. Yeah. Let's happy go have spring. a great spring happy break. Spring and <laughs> Easter and staycation happy again. Hey, thank you guys. Yeah. I'm excited for her, for them. All right. Thanks for being here with us. We hope you enjoyed the program. Tell a friend about us.